I let Slime Mold design a community, and here's what it taught me. This idea actually came from one of the weirdest science experiments I've ever seen. You see, in 2010, researchers put slime mold on a map of the Tokyo region, using oat flakes to mark the nearby cities. They wanted to see how this single-celled organism would connect the nodes. Within one day, it grew a network of trails nearly identical to Japan's existing rail system. Some even think the slime mold mapped it out more efficiently. So I had to test this out. First, I hand draw all the existing conditions. This helps slow me down enough so I can see all the layers. Then I 3D model the terrain and 3D print it. I study the contours, seeing where water runs off, where it collects. I build a watertight chamber, a tent to trap humidity, and then I start the slime mold. I place oats on the various nodes like home sites, gathering places, gardens, etc. Then I let it grow. This single celled organism sends scouts in all directions. When a scout hits food, it builds a highway back. That new node becomes base camp and then the network expands from there. Give it enough time and you'll get efficient connections between everything that matters. Now, this slime mold did something I wasn't expecting. I started following the shoreline, creating a river walk condition. At the ideal access points, it actually reached the shoreline and then pushed its way into the water. It showed how far it's willing to travel to an oat flake, a clue that some nodes might see less foot traffic. You've actually seen this before. You know that shortcut through the grass? Yeah, that's an example of organic flow. Right angles are nice on drawings, but real life moves like water flowing where the current takes us. You don't even have to use slime mold to do this. People have done this by releasing livestock on the land or even allowing people to wear down paths before choosing where to put the sidewalks. India has a cultural practice of planting gardens on every square inch of land, and then they'll make their paths by just walking on top of the plants. This creates the most efficient garden layout. I want you to try to break out of the standard grid and let real life guide you to the natural flow of a place. You might be surprised how it grows from there. And that's why 